Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again with another edition of Starter Builds, which are extremely late and procrastinated to the best of my ability. Uh, this time around, it is Delirium League, and uh, I've got four builds coming up for you. Three that are pretty damn solid, should be incredibly amazing, and then one, once as always, um, or again, is uh, provisional. It's going to be with the new skill, Kinetic Bolt, and it's going to be trying to incorporate some Spell Slinger action. It's probably the build I'm going to be playing, but uh, yeah, we're not too sure if that one's going to be a winner. You might be able to follow along with me and see how it goes, but the other three should definitely be strong as fuck builds that get you started throughout the early game and then scale well into the end game off of little gear, but plenty of room for incredible min-maxing to make it an end game beta, and it seems like they should synergize rather well with the Delirium content. And to get things started, we will go with the character you're currently watching, and that is Ice Nova Assassin. Now the footage is from the Ice Nova Assassin that I played during the hardcore race about nine months ago, and it was a character that got to level 99 in an extremely tough hardcore situation, and I'd still say Ice Nova is going to be one of the best things you can do at the moment as a spellcaster. As well as that, Vile Ice Nova should just shred Delirium content like it did uh, all kinds of Breach and any content that has lots of thick pack size. And Assassin, since last time I played it for this Ice Nova build, did get a bit of a revamp and some buffs. So it should be a faster, stronger build than before. And personally, I love Ice Nova. I've recommended it several times. I've played it quite a few times and I'm even still thinking about it right now. Uh, I just could not recommend it enough. Once it gets to around level 38 with Spell Echo, it really takes off. Until then, it's a little bit slow, but then it just keeps on ramping. Get a few little upgrades and you can make it an absolute monster. Now, as with all of these starters, I'm going to leave about 5 to 10 points completely free and take a outer jewel cluster for you so that if you grab a uh, certain jewel and roll it or just find the right one and it can be incorporated into your build, you do have the freedom with a few points to do so. If you're not going to really focus on cluster jewels or you can't get any, then typically I've tried to make it so each build has uh, just about enough defense and offense that you can kind of pick if you want to go for a bit more offense or a bit more defense, but it should be a little bit flexible and uh, just kind of up to you if you want to go for some cluster jewel action. Now this one here specifically is based around the Ice Nova from um, like nine months ago, you can find this uh, video full detailed um, sort of build guide for it. But uh, I have adjusted it a little bit, well, like I said, just to um, update it a little bit for today's world. And then as well as that, uh, just cut some points and brought you up to a clustered jewel socket. So it's an assassin. It's based around power charges. You do get crit. These days you get elusive as well. So it's a nice defensive and movement speed buff. And then also opportunistic, which is more movement speed once again. Prior to that, I didn't have this kind of movement speed last time I played, so it should be a lot faster. And the passive tree does definitely pretty much just build itself. You can't really go wrong. Pick up life as you need it. We do have mind over matter with a lot of mana unreserved so that we've got a good chunk of life and a good chunk of mana as defense. So uh, keep in mind that once you want to grab Mind Over Matter, you want to have a few of the other mana nodes. And we have this time around gone for the staff sort of aspect because uh, the end game item is definitely Pledger Hands. It's pretty much impossible to beat a Pledger Hands for Ice Nova scaling because with Spell Echo, every single time you press Ice Nova while it's floating out onto your Frost Bots, uh, it will double and then with greater spell echo it will triple and that is at no extra cast speed to you You just press the button once and then throw out like six ice novas something like that It's absolutely crazy But the playstyle is a little bit more complex than your average build because you throw out your frost bolt Which you will have a frozen trail um giving you a couple of extra projectiles, and then you'll point your Ice Nova over those projectiles uh, wherever you really want them. Um, so it's a two-step process, and it's something I've really enjoyed and gotten the hang of. Like I said, up until about level 38, it is going to be a bit shitty, a bit slow, because uh, you don't have that spell echo interaction. But once you do, uh, it really takes off and becomes quite a great build. Until then, you can use other things, maybe a Storm Brand, but I think still just Ice Nova is definitely good enough in that setup. 
Uh, so the end game is a pledge of hands. You can use whatever stuff until then. Just get something with good bit of crit. Doesn't really matter. I've left some uh, pretty flexible stuff for your amulet. Pandemonius is good, but it doesn't have to be your amulet. Just get some crit multi and some cast speed. Uh, and it's series promise for a bit of extra damage and leech. And otherwise, you will probably be sustaining a lot of your mana through an enduring mana flask. Uh, that should keep you pretty well sustained. Um, got yourselves a six link over here. Make sure you grab a Vile Ice Nova. That's going to be absolutely hard carrying you throughout a lot of the big pack clearing. And then uh, for single target, you chuck in Concentrated Effect, but most of the time you're playing with Area. And of course, it wouldn't be a build guide without telling you the Bandit. It's Alira. Pretty much any crit build is going to have Alira. And the only other thing I should mention is that um, your Frostbolt is kind of a utility in the end you're there just to use it to utilize your ice nova so fast casting arcane surge gmp all that sort of stuff is pretty good but otherwise if you really need more information i've got like three or four full-blown ice nova videos for you to follow can easily recommend the build it is a lot of fun the next build on the list is a little bit hard to tell what the fuck's going on. It's Double Strike on a Berserker using the Savior Sword. But, of course, you're not going to be really getting a Savior for a starter build, but that's no problem at all. It's not a build-defining item. It was just a build-enhancing item. And the uh, sort of starter thing I've got for you will still have pretty much the same amount of damage in the build, just you won't have a couple of clones. And those clones only really do too much work on a single target, but this build has way more than enough single target without a savior, and I don't think it should be at all a problem that you won't be using a savior for most of the build's career, because the scaling of Double Strike, uh, Impale, and Berserker with Abyssus, all of that is just super synergistic together. It doesn't really matter whether you have a savior or not. You can probably even tell throughout most of the videos of my savior character, which I do recommend checking out if you want to play this um, character through and through, that the clones aren't doing all too much. In the end though, this is the probably the fastest attacking, fastest leaping, and uh, biggest single target character I've ever played. That's just purely due to all the um, double strike impale scaling, especially with Berserker. It's absolutely nuts, and it's something you've got to experience yourself at some point doesn't have to be a berserker though you can definitely pick it as a champion a slayer um, a juggernaut gladiator all kinds of shit just about anything will make double strike absolutely steamroll so i do have a edited version of the original build uh, the original build went all the way over to this side of the tree as well but like i said i want to give you the option to get some cluster jewel action happening and uh kind of pick some uh, of your own things for berserker especially there's some interesting walker i nodes, some good double strike um, sorry, dual wielding nodes, some good impale nodes, life nodes. There's a lot of really good nodes that you might be able to uh, sort of branch out here. And I think that's going to be one of the strengths of cluster jewels. In current times, there's a real big option as to whether or not you stay in your area or branch out to get some really powerful nodes somewhere else, go one way to the tree or the other. There's a lot of um, back and forth and cluster jewels might just really well let you stay within your cluster and start um, branching out into one specific area as to uh, just fill out your own real niche of what you want um, once again still got plenty of life plenty of damage in the build this is similar sort of damage to what you'll have with a savior but since you're not using a savior which is kind of a crappy sword we just got a couple of basic corsair swords and uh, it should still give you well more than enough damage because this isn't even factoring in Impale or Vile Double Strike or Vile Warchief. And uh, it just scales pretty crazily. And uh, I did not include an explosion-based chest, which you get from Crusader mods, uh, because that is probably going to be a bit tough for you to get uh, early on. So it's just an Elder chest with a little bit of crit. But... If you still feel the need for explosions, then run some hemophilia gloves in your glove slot. And there's plenty of opportunity for you to get more life or more damage, depending on what you feel like you need in the build. But the ascendancies we've got here are uh, going for more damage and then the crit and um, physical damage. I'd then really recommend Warbringer. It's actually an incredibly underrated node that uh, gives you a lot of damage, attack speed, recovery, and with some of the new cluster notables, you can make it even stronger and do much more for you as well. You just have to get used to pressing Enduring Cry pretty much non-stop like a flask. 
and you only really take blitz once you've got quite a lot of crit in your build it might take a while to ramp up to that because no blitz means you've got quite a lot of crit blitz means you've got a lot more attack speed but less crit the blitz is actually just kind of a side grade it's uh, not too much of a damage upgrade it's just something you take once you feel like you've gotten to a certain crit level where you're ready to dump some and get a lot more attack speed uh, double strike can be playable right from the start but you do need a pretty uh, locked in four link of double strike, chance to bleed, ancestral call, and melee splash. Uh, once you get that four link going, you can get that by level eight. That's when uh, double strike will just go carry all the way through and scale thanks to its uh, original physical damage that it has on the skill every single time it levels. And I definitely recommend getting a vile double strike because that's going to carry your single target damage for a lot of the build. If you need a lot more info about the build though, definitely check out the uh, couple of comprehensive videos I've made for it um, maybe about a month ago for the last league. I then have another well and truly established build for you to play and that is uh, Cobra Lash which I'm pretty sure I recommended in the last starter build video but this time around it will be a Pathfinder with Claws which uh, has the potential to be just a bit more sustainable and also easier to gear and it's just a character I really loved playing as a starter it got me right through like level 95 on the first character of the league which is pretty rare for me to do because it just kept scaling and was so enjoyable to play and I do think that um, it has potential to really clean up Delirium quite nicely which is why I'm going to go ahead and recommend it again if you want to do something a bit different not Cobra Lash. Um, you can instead go Scourge Arrow as a Pathfinder as well. Also an extremely strong build and one that I've played uh, in the Legion League. Got a full guide out there for that one too. But Cobra Lash is something you should really look into if you've never tried a Poison build or if you've never tried uh, this specific type of Cobra Lash build because it has a lot of chaining, it's got a lot of projectiles, it's got a lot of proliferation of the poisons that just spreads all over the place in a very satisfying manner and with the claw version you don't need to have a binos, you just have dual wasps nest which are pretty damn cheap early on into the league and like I said it starts off with little gear but it can scale really high if you invest the right time and effort into it. The other real benefit to these types of builds is they are pretty well situated to get some of the cluster jewels because you are swinging right past a good node here um, for a cluster jewel and also right past here. So if you need more cluster jewel opportunities you can grab them here but the trees on this one are already pretty bloated on most poison builds because there's a lot of good poison nodes on the tree and you kind of want to take them all already but there are some really nice ones to look into with the new notables in either way, uh, either case with some extra duration, uh, extra chaos damage, poison dot multi, claw stuff. Uh, it's just going to be kind of up to you to look out for that. And I do have a spare 10 points for you to play around with if you need to. But if you can't get anything there, you can easily just grab claws of the pride. You can easily go up here for uh, growth and decay and for some extra life. But uh, it's going to be kind of up to what you can find and how much more you can do with it. But it's a pretty basic passive tree, as most poison builds are. You're just grabbing a bunch of the poison stuff. And as a pathfinder, you are getting uh, poison prolif as the first thing in, um, by a huge priority. Because once you get that, your clear just starts to take off and feel really smooth. And in this version, we are going claws. So you'll be using dual wasps nest. And uh, one thing that is... Unfortunate, it looks a lot, cool, a lot cooler to throw claws as Cobra Lash than daggers. The daggers are just like these little needles, whereas the claws are real cool uh, sort of claw-like um, adder's touch animation type thing. Uh, so these things are really cheap. Before that, Mortem Morses would take you a very long way as well. And the rest of your gear is kind of just trying to get life and resists. Uh, a little bit of flat chaos that you can craft it goes a really long way on your jewelry and then ultimately just about every single gem in your setup can be replaced with awakened gems and that will give you a really large boost especially added chaos it's got almost twice as much damage on the awakened version and added chaos is a huge part of our damage in this build and then as well as that unbound ailments is large deadly ailments is large it's uh, got a lot of room for scaling and once again, don't forget to use Plague Bearer early on. It will help your um, single target. It's kind of like a righteous fire that you stack up and then just press it to unleash 
and when you're near enemies it, they will take quite a lot more poison damage so uh, that's something to keep in mind and then once you get your wither totem set up as well that's once again one when your single target is going to start to take off but it's kind of uh, going to take a little bit of ramp um, before your poison really starts to do anything so bear in mind you do have to give it a bit of a shot and um, I do have a couple of Coralash videos you can follow, more specifically the um, actual starter I played at the start of Blight League. That one's got a few compre comprehensive videos, but uh, yeah, I do like absolutely love this one as well, and I'm really struggling to decide between my three starters because um, Assassin Ice Nova, Coralash, and the last one. Uh, spell Sling, Kinetic Bolt are all going to be amazing fun and something I can really sink my teeth into as a first character of the league. But that does bring us to the build I will most likely do or force myself to do simply because it's new and I have to kind of figure it out myself especially if anyone else is going to try and uh, simulate what I'm doing and that is Kinetic Bolt uh, with most likely Power Siphon as a uh, single target and then incorporating some spell slinger action into our clear uh, i will probably try and incorporate spell slinger with arc if i feel like i need the extra clear maybe something a bit different but we will have all three elements um, being penetrated with the witch ascendancy of the heralds so we can kind of do whatever we want in our uh, spell slot and the idea is to just stack elemental damage it's going to be similar to the power siphon inquisitor i did at the near the start of uh, last league scales in a similar sort of way it should be something you can play right from level one since you can get kinetic bolt from level one and it scales with spell damage but it's something that's still a little bit tentative wanders traditionally are not good uh, first league characters but with the way these things scale now with kinetic bolt with spell slinger i think it may actually be a very successful first character it's just going to be kind of questionable as to whether or not it can scale into the end game so as a fair warning the title of this pob is i have no idea what i'm doing elementalist wonder and it yeah that I am going to be trying to do it a similar sort of way from the um, elemental hit elementalist I've done in the past, which was an extremely successful build, but that did have quite a lot more gear and it was energy shield based. Whereas this time around, we're not doing any scaling from elemental hit. We will have to get some stuff from gear, but a lot of it, it should still be coming from our golems uh, and our heralds. A lot of the scaling should come from the flat lightning, flat cold from the Herald of Ice and Thunder. And as well as that, I'll try and incorporate Wrath and then uh, all of the golems. And we'll only use five golems because if you use the uh, necklace for another three these days, it's kind of a bit too much to be reducing the golem life. They do actually start to die to things, so we don't really want to do that. So it will be five golems uh, thanks to this node, these nodes, and then an anima stone. And I've got a whole bunch of the uh, damage incorporated there just so that um, it actually works because on this version of a path of building, uh, these nodes don't work. Rest assured, you cannot get an anima stone with these mods. But the idea is that we'll probably start by going through the spell damage, but we'll refund it later because it's not super worth it in the end. But for early game with kinetic bolt we'll take the spell damage and then uh, most likely go over to the left to start picking up some other good damage nodes and get our um, golem stuff up and ready by level 34 and i think it should just start scaling really nicely with a little bit of lightning damage uh, on the wand a little bit of spell damage wherever you can find it and kinetic bolt looks like it'll clear things quite nicely all by itself uh, you're going to want some sort of wand that has some flat lightning, flat cold, flat fire. It doesn't really matter, but ideally I think lightning for bigger shocks. And then a shield that's going to have some spell damage. Ideally a devouring diadem in the end, but that's going to be more of a late game option, I think. And we're going to be trying to do some sort of um, Eldritch Battery Mind Over Matter hybrid. So you're going to be life based, maybe about 5,000 life, about 2,000 energy shield. And quite likely I'm going to be grabbing Zealot's Oath to take care of my energy shield regen and that's going to transfer away all of my life regen so then i'm going to have to do some leeching with my um 
uh, life portion. And there's not too many points left over for clusters yet because uh, we are pretty passive tree heavy for all the things we want. But there are some really nice options for elementalist as um, cluster notables, things that benefit your heralds, things that benefit your golems. So if we can roll some things like that, we might divert some passives over there. But for now, this is kind of the passive tree with just a few loose extra points. But the key things to note are we're going to want one slinger so that power siphon does similar sorts of damage to your uh, kinetic bolt. We're going to want an extra golem. We want these nodes over here to give us extra damage and the golems extra regen. And everything else is kind of whatever. Uh, it's just a bunch of damage and stuff like that. And you're going to want to really try and get your ice golem, your fire golem, and your lightning golem um, up quite early and all the time because that's where a lot of your damage is going to come from and a lot of your crit. Uh, other than that, there's not too much else to mention, I don't think. Mantra of Flames would be really nice to get early on as well, because by like level 40, we'll have damn near 10 buffs on us, and that gives you like a really high level Anger's worth of damage, which is pretty damn thick. Uh, and the idea is that we're going to be Spell Slinger with um, Kinetic Bolt, something like Energy Leech, Spell Slinger Arc, and then our Power Siphon with Barrage will be our single target. You can kind of see what the Wanding playstyle is going to be like, uh, if you look at the Inquisitor um, Power Siphon character I built at the start of uh, Last League. And um, then it's just going to be kind of incorporated with some Spell Slinger and as an Elementalist. But it should work out to some extent. Maybe we'll run out of gear. Maybe we'll run out of time. Don't know. I'm kind of looking forward to playing with it because it just looks really cool. So... Hope this was good enough for a little bit of a start of video for you guys. Um, if you choose any of the others, it's going to be amazing. If you choose this, who knows? Maybe it'll suck balls. I sure hope not. It looks like it'll be fun. But thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the morning with the actual league launch. I'll be on about an hour before the actual start. And I will have, as always, a bit of a cosplay. I'm going to say it's questionable. I'm going to say this may be my most scuffed attempt yet. I'm scared. I'm nervous. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.